What a, what a, what a, let me send out the noties. Send out all the, we are live. All right, let me just put it on Instagram, and then we are Liddy. We are Liddy. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Story. Mm. Add the link. Base. And we Liddy. My bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. Oh, here, let me put a, this right here. There we go. We here. Everything's posted out there. What up, Taylor? Shout out to Taylor. What up, Charles? But shout out to Taylor. Taylor bought the very first. Yes, I said it. Taylor, you have made, you are, you are the very first high member and just high fam, regardless of, of membership status, that has supported the new merch. Shout out to Taylor. She went ahead and copped the uh, Intelligent Mind hoodie. You know what I'm saying? She said, yo, I need to go ahead and cop the Intelligent Mind hoodie. So she went ahead and did that. You dig what I'm saying? And the dope thing about it, she's number one, bro. She's the first one out of any of the designs. She's going to be number one to get her mother hoodie you dig what i'm saying any of our god damn i love that i love that support you know what i'm saying i gotta give my shit thank you taylor thank you taylor you made you made my goddamn day <laughs> anyways shout out to you guys man shout out to taylor for show for show because she went ahead and copped a goddamn hoodie and you know was like yo i need that and i was like yo that's so tight so i saw i saw her name pop up and i was like i know who that is so shout out to you taylor I really appreciate it. What up, Laura? What up? What up? Yeah, I'm so excited. Yeah, shout out to Taylor. Uh, yeah, she she grabbed her her you know her hoodie. She's she got the high fam, the very first high clothing sale. Period. You know what I'm saying? The very first purchase of the the new high clothing you know line that we're doing. Powered by that guy, my high. You know what I'm saying? I wanted you guys to love this stuff without it being attached to me. Um, and I feel like that's that we've accomplished that. Like, I feel like we've gotten an overwhelming, you know, like, yeah, thumbs up on the new designs. Um, and yeah, the fact that Taylor has now solidified the situation and been like, you know what? Boom, purchase. I need that is super dope. So, shout out to you, Taylor. I just got to get that praise because I saw that shit. A little bit ago and i was like that's so tight uh but yeah shout out to you too laura i appreciate you you know being a member in the past and wanting to be one again we hope that you come back you know what i'm saying we got a bunch of new membership stuff coming this this year we're going to be doing membership lives so every sunday's live is now going to be members only so shout out to all the members who uh will be able to join on those sunday lives if you want to join those sunday lives please just think about hitting that join button you know that's just one of the perks that you will get uh, you know, to take advantage of being a member. So yeah, I love y'all. Let's go ahead and give a big shout out to all the members real quick. Uh, all 27 of you. I know there's a few people that have, you know, had, uh, cards lapse or had memberships lapse for whatever reasons, you know what I'm saying? We don't really care, but shout out to all of the memberships that, you know, are members that in the past, the future, all that stuff, because y'all don't owe me any explanation for why you're not a member anymore or why you are a member. 
but I appreciate you either way. You dig what I'm saying? So, gang, gang, gang. Let's give a shout out to all the gang. We got Holla Boy, Nene, Netcoast, Taylor, Shauna, Driver Thoughts, Nick, Nick, Dave, Happy Chick, Wild Turkey, Jamal, Ryan, Sam, Keith, uh, Ken is Funny Farm, Holla Girl, Diesel, Creative Insane, Aaron, Mama Dukes, Amy, Jane Doe, Liz, Nugget, My Hood Life, and Gary Willis. Gang, 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 gang. You dig what I'm saying? Shout out to y'all. What up, Dwayne? Uh, so, yeah, if you guys want to become members, think about hitting that join button down below. You dig what I'm saying? Hey. <laughs> But let's go ahead, let's hit that full screen, man, and let's go ahead and, uh, oh, it's all good, bro, go ahead and, uh, you, got, you just gotta hit it up. Some people set it up for auto renewal, some people have it to where it, you gotta actually go in and renew it every month, um, so it's all, it's all based on you. That's why I don't be tripping, because I, I, I understand how, you know, I be setting up my life and my memberships to suit my life as well, you dig? So, I get it. <laughs> let's jump into this video, man. Spark up, dab up, vape up, dip up, moonshine it up, sweet tea it up, do what you gotta do, just go up, maybe take a shot or two or three, because a couple is for me, if you can't do none of that, open up your mind, because my ultimate, oh god damn, I lost it, I was, that was clean, I was spitting in bars right there, you know what I'm saying, let's go. <laughs> on November 11th, 2022, a Monroe County Sheriff's deputy was on routine patrol when they observed a speeding motorcycle in Sugarloaf Key, Florida. If you want me to uh, sign it, I will. According to speed radar. The motorcyclist was traveling 117 I mean, I miles per hour because, in a posted 45 mile per hour zone. The deputy activated their emergency lights and attempted to conduct a traffic stop, but it appeared the motorcyclist accelerated and began fleeing. He came by quick. So now the question is, is does he actually catch the cop? Or I mean, catch the motorcycle? The deputy pursued him for three miles before losing visual and discontinuing for safety reasons. A okay. few minutes later, another deputy observed the motorcyclist speeding and passing other vehicles in the center lane. Wow. So all he would have had to do is just slow the fuck down and go the, the fucking speed limit. He could have got away. He's a fucking idiot. Oh, there's another cop right there. <laughs> what was that the operator doing? was identified as 35-year-old Quincy Martin. Let me see your hand. Get off the bike. Step to the front of my car. You're under arrest for being a jackass. Take off your. Okay. Thirty-one mile marker. And you got a motherfucking GoPro, so they got this whole thing. You, you've got it filmed. Look at people driving by like, yeah, get his ass. Put your hand behind your back. Hands. You're being detained right now. Because you've been running from cops. No. I, I yeah. Stopped. I stopped as soon as I heard you. Okay, put your hands behind your back. Bruh, it took this dude fucking a solid like five minutes to fucking catch you before you to finally pull over. I'm from Canada, I'm not from here. No weapons on you? No, sir. You mind if I take your helmet off? No problem. I have to take off your car. Oh, this dude look like he from like Barbados See or right some shit. He definitely ain't okay. from, uh, from there. Hold on. Step, step right out. Okay. Hold on. Good morning, guys. Do you want to move up a little bit so we can get by? I'll move. Hold on, brother. I'm all right. <laughs> they went ahead and just passed his ass off like... Michelle Dwayne. What's your name? Let me know when you put your order in and uh, 
Can I call you Quincy? I'll, I'll Quincy. go ahead and make sure Quincy. to sign it. Can I call you Q? Yeah, Q. Q of Deputy Torres, the Sheriff's Office, all right? Yeah. You do, you... I'm from I'm being arrested up this time. I'm not from here. Yeah, I'm from Trinidad and Tobago. Okay. Oh, from Trinidad. I, I wasn't around in front of cups or anything. They canceled my Oh, okay. Quincy told deputies he was trying to make it back on time for his flight and never saw a patrol vehicle attempting to stop him. Sorry, officer, whatever it is, it's a misunderstanding. I, I would never run from the cops. I'm not even from the country. Like, I wouldn't do that. Well, you ran from him, you ran from me. You're going about 70, passing in a no-passing zone. I didn't see. I was trying to get back to Fort Lauderdale. I didn't know that, you know, I couldn't pass on the inside or whatever it is that I did wrong. I, I would never run from the cops. Q, I'm going to ask you a couple questions. But before I do that, all right, okay. you know what? You know, and in his defense, too, I got to say, like, if you aren't from, you know, the United States, like, you're not going to necessarily know like the rules you know what i'm saying and and even being from the united states i'll tell you this the rules are drastically different in every goddamn state for the most part yes there's the core we all have like the same kind of like core rules but you know there's a lot of rules that are kind of like slightly different that can mean you know completely different things in in certain states you know some states that like for instance the california you know stop sign situation like you can you can roll and like not actually come to a complete stop at Cali and just keep it pushing through the, the stop sign as long as you come to a yield, as long as you yield enough to like, you know, see and make sure you can pass through the intersection safely. No one, no cop is gonna stop you for that. You do that shit here in Colorado, you getting a fucking ticket like immediately. You know what I'm saying? Running a stop sign, reckless driving and shit. Like they don't play that game. What up, buzzard? So. That 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 I will give that to him. If he's not really from the United States, I don't. I'm not gonna sit, sit here and like ex, expect him to know all our driving rules. Granted, he should be at least somewhat knowledgeable with the rules, being that he wants to drive here in the United States. But I'm not gonna expect him to know them because I'm fucking born and raised here, and I don't know all the goddamn rules to the fucking road all the time, especially when I'm in different states. So yeah, and then to even complicate shit even worse. Being on a motorcycle is a whole nother motherfucking situation because the rules are so much different than driving a fucking car when you're in a fucking mo or when you're on a motorcycle. Some states, motorcycles can do damn near whatever the fuck they want. They can split cars and lanes and all sorts of stupid shit that can get them killed. I don't highly advise that shit, but some states that shit's not legal. You know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of gray areas and, and, and nonsense with these goddamn laws. So. That's in his defense. I'm just saying. Not Miranda saying he's right. Is, uh, in his defense. Yeah. Do you have? Do they do that? Uh, the police do that over no, there. It but anyway, so in the United States, you have you have the right to remain silent, right? But so like, so I'm going to ask some self-incriminating questions, which I don't want you to feel like you have to answer without your attorney present. Okay. So before I do that, I'm going to read this to you. Okay. Before we ask you any questions, understand your rights. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be against you in court. You have the right to talk to a lawyer for advice before you ask you any questions. You have the right to have a lawyer during questioning. If you cannot afford one, one be appointed before you during questioning if you wish. If you decide to answer now without a lawyer present, you have the right to stop answering at any time. Okay, if you just, all right, you understand these rights I've explained to you? I, I do. Okay, and if you can not afford one, an, uh, he stumbled his ass through wish, those okay? fucking With these rights of mind, mind Miranda talk, rights I'm, fucking I'm, terrible. I'm going to explain all, I'm going to explain that to you, but before I do that, do you mind uh, if, I, if, if we talk? Is that okay? No problem. Okay. So anyway, cute. So I got you on visually estimated you don't know the post speed limit, okay? Right. My radar there confirmed my best, my visual estimation. So you're doing 117 in a 45 mile per hour zone. And not only were you doing that, you're doing that going through passing a school. Very dangerous, very dangerous, okay? I activated my license sirens behind you, okay? Damn, and when you went, well, and we were close enough no this, I, saw you, I did see you break. You break, right? Did you saw my you saw my lights? I was moving with the flow of traffic. Right? No, you are, buddy, it's on, it's, it's, it's on camera. You break, you break two times, and we'll have my lights of sirens activated, and you took off. You started passing people and no passings. Uh, you know, you, you continue to, to stop. Who's this dude? He's an undercover or some shit? What the fuck is this guy? I understand it's, you're going fast. I understand maybe. Oh, he's someone you know, who wants you, to make a you, statement. Uh, you know, you're trying to get back home, but. One, the, the speed you're going at is very, very dangerous, not only for yourself or to someone else. Because if you get hit going that fast, there's no more cue. It's you'll become splat. And if you hit somebody else, all right, there's still no more cue. 
splat. You see what I'm saying? So the fact is, I know you saw me behind you. It, 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 Hell it, it, yeah, bro. In, Trin in Trinidad, do they have police? Yeah. They do. do they have lights and sirens? Yeah, they do. All right. In Trinidad, if they, if they try pulling you over, what do you do? They pull you over. You stop, right? That's so why, did, why didn't you do it now? When I saw him, I pulled over. I went, ask him, when I saw him in the mirror, I slowed down to, make, to see if he was coming for me. And when I realized that he was coming for me, I pulled over. Negative. When you caught up to me, just so you know, I'm a cop. Yeah. When you caught up to me, you looked right under your shoulder, right at him coming. And then you went around me and ran a box truck off the road. The first officer I saw what was this Negative. guy. That's it not true. Him. And I saw you because you said you, 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 break, you, break, you break twice and there was no one in front of you. So there's no traffic holding you up. Well, I'm sorry. I I, really, I swear I didn't see you. The first what I saw was when he pulled out. Well, that's not, that's, that, see, I don't, I, again, that, that's, you have the right to say that, but okay. I think what happened was that you realized there's, there's nowhere else to go. There's only one road in and out of here and there's no way getting out I, I yeah I, like I, I think that fucking cop is reaching like you want him to say again some self-incriminating shit like yeah i ran from you like nope i didn't run from your ass i didn't see you sorry <laughs> i pulled over when i saw this motherfucker but you i didn't see him and i damn sure didn't see you you plain clove motherfucker over there with your goddamn motherfucking mustache and shit i didn't see you okay wait because <laughs> listen what up Nick? Listen, I've had many. No, no problem. To, to, with respect to you, I've had many chases, and they say the same thing. Okay. If if we were like far distance and all that stuff, I understand that. But I was literally invisible distance. I, like I said, I, I was able to see you break twice. Okay. Right. And if you didn't see me, what was your reasoning for passing and no passings and all that stuff? Why? Honestly, I'm, a, I'm running a little late. I have a flight to catch at 2 p.m., so I'm trying to get out of here to get to Fort Lauderdale so I can catch my flight. I'm wrong for what I did. But I swear, I, I didn't see any officer before I saw him. I know it may seem that way, but I really didn't see any officer before him. And all I was trying to do is just get out of here so I can get back to get my flight. You, don't, you, don't you, have, you have a passport or no? Yeah, but it's, it's not with me. It's at home. It's at home? You know when you're coming to the United States, you're, you're, how that happened? How do you even get in the United States? You have your passport. No, I have my passport. It's in Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. But you know, when you're driving, you're supposed to have if you're if you don't have a, like a, a driver's license in the United States, you're supposed to have your country of origin's driver's license and your passport. Well, um, what I was told is that the driver's permit is okay for three months or, or ninety days. Yeah, with your passport. Oh, sorry about that. Okay. Nobody told me. Twelve finger on patrol too. My office, Damn. I don't get in trouble like that. It, it goes beyond this, you know. I may mean, lose my visa. I, I, like I'm sorry. Twelve for name and deal, be ready. Damn. That's not, that's not his fault. That's I mean, not his fault. I know. Right? I know. You're in danger. My family, his family, his family. That box truck you ran off the road right in front of me could have hit that barricade. Uh, could have hit the side of that bridge and it hit me head on. There's no excuse for what you just did. I watched you. Look, I ride. I got a BMW. I watched you look back, just like I do, to see what's behind me. And then, then I shaded over to try and slow you down. I shaded over into the oncoming lane to try and slow you down because I saw him coming. And you looked back, and you said, forget it. And you went around me and almost ate that box truck head on and split the lanes with traffic down the middle over the bridge. I, I know that's how it seemed, officer, but that wasn't my intention. So let me ask you a question. Did you not go around oh, man. my truck? This dude, and this is definitely a truck. This dude looks like one of the Florida fucking the assholes, bro. Did you not? Like, like not saying that he's saying anything wrong, but just like the way he's like real side, right? aggressive and shit, just like he got that effect, that typical, you know, like what, what, what you expect. <laughs> like a Florida cop. The other dude is cool as fuck so far. This motherfucker, like every time he speaks, he's like overly aggressive. You're saying like, listen, I can lose my visa. I can lose. That's not his fault. That's not his fault. And it's but not what he's saying is not that. I mean, it's not false. Like he's really speaking facts. Like. You know, you lose your visa, it really has nothing to do with those cops that are I'm just doing their job, too, so. Right? And I'm here right now to write a statement because of you. I'm sorry, Elvis. You seem like a really nice guy. You're being a polite, respectful, and, you know. I am. I, I don't know. Yeah, and, and that's that's why I say and you I shouldn't be so goddamn aggressive. <laughs> you speak you, you, facts, but damn. You calls when you get down to the jail. So you bring your phone with you, and uh, then you go from there. $18 here, correct? Yeah, correct. Right. Agree? I agree. Okay. They also discovered 7.5 grams of marijuana in his backpack, and he did not possess a medical marijuana card. Oh, bruh. Oh, man. Come on. 
He ain't Jamaican? Why you just do the, oh, man. Like, what kind of... <laughs> Come on, bro. Take my foot off the bike. Yeah, I'm going to do it right now. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to count your money in front of the uh, camera over there. Okay. Hold, on. Hold on. Nothing else I'm missing? Okay. Take a seat. Okay. I ran into all the DJs in no return. Thank you, special. What's gonna happen with the bike? Huh? To be towed. Yeah. Game over. Facts, bro. All good. And the marijuana, go test that stuff now. I'm gonna open the main department. We gotta test it for it. We. Q, do you have a medical marijuana card? What? You have a medical marijuana card? Uh, no, you, you, my, you just bought that to hang out in QS and stuff? I bought it in QS. In my country, we, we can move with up to one ounce of marijuana. And so can you, you in fucking... Uh, um, I can't remember. Like, you can in Florida, too. It's decriminalized. decriminalized. Okay, would you buy? If he gives him a ticket for that shit, it's because he's being an asshole. I'm going to let y'all know now. Florida's decriminalized. So technically, up to a certain uh, amount, I'm pretty sure actually in Florida, I think it is actually an ounce. You're, it's it's a misdemeanor. It's a ticket. It's it's a walk away fine basically. Like they they're not something you go to jail for. Um, if they can di like directly contribute what you have to the intent of distributing it, right? Like you actually out here selling it, regardless of what the amount is. If you have all the you know tools to sell and make money off of it, baggies and a scale and such. Well, then, you know, you got a whole different set of charges to worry about because then you got, you know, worry about intent to distribute and all the other bullshit, right? But it's decriminalized. So if he chooses to get a ticket or give him a ticket, it's really just, it was the officer's discretion to just kind of do that. Um, but yeah, other than the decriminalization, it is only medical. So to not get in trouble in any way, right? No ticket, no fine, no nothing. If it's medical, they can't do shit. So that's why they're really asking. Because they, can, they get the, uh, you know, it's they have the discretion to write a ticket. Well, it is with a medical marijuana card. Oh. So, okay. But it's decriminalized. Um, tell them, so tell them all of it. I'm not from the country, and my country is used to doing that. It's illegal. Well, for example, they're used to doing a lot of cocaine in South America. You can't just come and do a bunch of cocaine I mean, here. Marijuana. No, but you, no, unfortunately not. Oh, well, the worst that's going to happen is if anything, he gets deported. He loses his visa, but he'll be free on the streets back begging. home. Can I get a chance, please? No, buddy. Unfortunately not. So I shaded over to try, because he was coming. I could see him trying to get mm -hmm. over to look. So I shaded over a little bit to try and block his view to give you a chance to catch up. And But there was a box truck and a few cars coming. And he initially looked, and he popped back behind me. I was like, all right, he's going to get pinned for a minute, give you mm -hmm. a chance to get up to him. And I saw him do the whole, like, mm -hmm. look you know, thing. And then he was like, fuck it. He popped out and went right at the box truck. We're on the bridge at that point. The box truck had to go over to the, mm -hmm. as far as he could hit the brakes, went over. He split right down the middle of all of them. Damn. Cut back into traffic and then just down. kept pop, popping out, popping out. Um, and if you're um, sergeant or anybody has any pers pursuit questions, I mean, as far as I could watch, I watched you drive in a very safe manner. Your speeds were never excessive. Oh, thank you, thank you. So, <laughs> Thank you, Captain. If, if they have any questions, I'm happy yes, to answer. Yes, sir. Thanks, okay. I appreciate right. it. Thank Safe you, travels. I appreciate it. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Oh, and that's a pretty nice bike, too. That sucks. Damn. I was looking at the return said red and white, so I just want to make sure the VIN was the same. <laughs> He's got the registration roll in there if you want to look at it. On our friend, the tank, they said, it said a red and white Suzuki. I was like, oh, shit, that looks black to me. It looks black to me, too. But the, the, but the, yeah, but the VIN. But, uh, all right, I'm almost done. Let me get this done. Damn. Okay, one, two, three. Okay. Yeah, he lost. He lost whatever visa he, right here. Yeah. he had for sure. And then when you take that off, they're gonna go. They're gonna go until they get some water and all that stuff. Maybe Monster will sponsor you now. I'm just kidding. For racing. Let me wash you to the bench right there. You're right now. The bench right there. Okay, I'm going to start the report up right now, so hopefully I have it done uh, it with them enough time to book you. Nine o'clock tomorrow morning. Not today. Yeah, not, not today. today. Okay. Yeah, because today's a holiday. It was at nine this morning. In fact, it's done now. Yeah, Damn. question for me. Lost, missed that flight. All right, go back out there. Damn. Quincy was charged with felony fleeing, eluding an officer. Misdemeanor counts of reckless driving. First offense.
and possession of marijuana. So he told you the, the marijuana was His cash mean. bond was set at $50,000. Ooh, that was 5000 for, for reckless driving, yep. 10000 for possession of marijuana, and 35000 for fleeing, eluding an officer. Woo! Go to CodeBlueCam.com. They smacked him hard, and that's because he wasn't. A, he's not a resident and shit, not a, a citizen. Holy moly. Well, don't be doing shit that you ain't supposed to be doing in other countries, bro. That's all I can say about that shit. God damn. Hopefully it worked out for Buddy, but I'm imagining that it, it didn't necessarily work out for Buddy. So, yeah, you know, it probably didn't work in his favor. Probably not. <laughs> I think it's a safe safe bet. Bitcoin millionaire ex-con stopped driving Maserati with expired tags. Let's see about this guy. Oh, we got a motorcycle cap? We got a motorcycle cop. We have yet to see a motorcycle cop pull over somebody. Adam George Sam 32 is on uh, blue Maserati. I am at Gulfstream and Ringling. Hey, officer. Hi, sir. I'm Officer Kennedy, sir. So the police department traffic unit, just so you know, our conversation is being recorded. The reason that you're being stopped today is the use of a cell phone, and it wasn't hands free in the construction zone. Okay? Especially where you were, because you're doing this crossover and the roads all wonky and everything. If you're distracted by using the yeah. cell phone, then you can get yourself hurt. Yeah, you're right. And you got people in your life that care about you and they don't yeah. want you to be hurt. I promise you that. Okay, uh, so whatever it is. This cop over here taking his like super car. concerned this approach. This thing is Bluetooth. I know God it is. Damn. So use it so you don't get yourself hurt. I couldn't have waited two seconds to my office down the road to text. I'm stupid. Yeah. Right and we are, we are 100% in school zones and in construction zones that we're out here to enforce that, okay? Because we don't want the workers to get hurt, we don't want you to get hurt, so. And when you're coming up through here, if it's all a white line, you can't cross over. I know that you saw the big truck in front of it, and you don't want to get stuck behind all that, yeah. but you gotta stay in your lane. That's what that white line's for, to make sure that you stay in your lane. All right? Do you have insurance on the vehicle? Yeah, of course. Can I see your uh, insurance? Can I pull up my phone and I have Sure, a sure. You still live at the uh, drive? Yes. All right. This guy looks like a okay. one of them like. All right, give techie, me just a minute. I'll be right back with you. Okay. Bitcoin, fucking individuals. He's just got that look. You know what I'm saying? Like he's like went bald from fucking stressing out over code too fucking much. <laughs> you got all sorts of room. What up, Funny Farm? Sir, I didn't even pay attention. Why is your tag expired from 2020? Holy! I got it renewed. We uh, we don't. I just don't drive the car as much, and I should get it renewed. Okay. Well, yeah. it's two years. Yeah. Okay. All right. Sit tight. Thank you. Damn. There's your license back. So what's happening today is you're receiving a citation for prohibited use of wireless communication device handheld in a work zone, first offense, okay? Then you're receiving a citation for tag being expired by two years. And then I'm just giving you a warning on the improper lane change through the construction zone there. Just, if there's a solid line, don't cross over, okay? With the um, moving violation, the cell phone, you have 30 days. You can either prepay, you can request a court date if you want to contest this, or you can do the online driver safety course that keeps any points from going against your license. On the uh, tag, obviously you got to get it taken care of, and you have the option of either prepaying or requesting a court date. The green sheet is the clerk's office payment sheet. It has their web address right here that you can make payment at, plus all the options I've described to you there. Okay. Man, he, got, he got off lucky, man. That was some bullshit right there. 
I was thinking, like, maybe he's going to get pulled out the car. Maybe, like, you know, he was going to have some bullshit excuses. Like, there was really nothing to that shit. I'm like, moving on. <laughs> Fuck that. Anyways. All right, let's see. You know what? We I don't think there's any more fucking cop videos, actually. Anything that's worth watching. So let's move on. We're going to go do some fucking, like, let's see what Slap Ham's got going on. Or caught on camera. Yeah, now let's do Slap Ham. Let's do Slap Ham. Real creepy sightings caught on camera. Let's go. Smoking some OG Kush? Hell yeah, I'm smoking on some Raz Berry Beret. Yeah, yeah, Raz Berry Beret. I'm a shot. How you doing? I'm Callan, and this is Slapped Ham. Today we're looking at some creepy clips that no one can quite explain. So hit that subscribe button and get ready for more creepy content. Just like this. Just like this. <laughs> Our first clip of the day was captured by TikTok user Mark DeFalco. In May 2022, Mark noticed that a car had driven through a fence at a local cemetery. He took out his phone, and this is what he captured. Lucky they didn't hit none of these tombstones. Real lucky. Straight away, you can see the carnage. Hello? But then, as he approaches the car, watch what happens. You okay? What the hell? What did it hit? What the f is going on here? There ain't nobody there. Miss? Hello? Watching that again, as Mark walks towards the car, you can hear what sounds like a woman crying. Oh, fuck that, bro. I'd have been out of there. You okay? Fuck that. When he looks closer, there's no one in or around the car. What the f is going on here? There ain't nobody there. Miss? Hello? Yeah, Despite fuck that, only bro. running through a Get wire out of there, fence, buddy. the car looks pretty <laughs> Get out of there, buddy. What the hell? What the f is going on here? There ain't nobody yeah, there. What the f is going Miss? on here? Hello? So if there's no one in the car, then where's the crying coming from? This eerie little detail, coupled with the graveyard setting, has led many viewers to suggest that something paranormal is going on here. Yeah, what well, do you think? My thing is, is how did the fence do that much damage to the front of that car? Like, I get it. It's a BMW. It's a little sedan. But that fence wasn't no, like, it doesn't seem like that fence was, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, super tough. Like, he just kind of, like, drove it down. Like, it, I, don't, I just don't understand how the car is even that fucked up. He, there's no tombstones, no nothing that are hit. Like, what is, what caused the, the damage is what Love I'm confused about. to hear your thoughts about. on this like, creepy video in the comments down below. I mean, the, the, the crying part is okay? creepy as shit, too. But what the fuck did he hit? Or she hit? Or whoever hit? What the hell? What the fuck is going on here? There ain't nobody there. Yeah, what the fuck is going on here? An Alabama local has captured something mysterious on a home security camera, and it's making residents question whether alien activity is happening close to their homes. The clip was uploaded to TikTok by Ashtar Spaceship News. It's a little after 10 p.m. on November 29th, 2022, like the when the home Falcon CCTV system captures this. Look like a Star Wars shot. Several lights flash in the night sky. One then takes off at considerable speed before disappearing from view. The Margaret, Alabama resident hmm. says that similar sightings had been happening all month and that he has two hard drives full of video evidence. He's certain that the object isn't a weather balloon, a passing satellite or a shooting star. 
The southeastern state of Alabama is no stranger to famous UFO encounters. On February 11 and 12 in 1989, the small town of Fife, Alabama was subjected to what many call an alien invasion. Over the That'd course of two days, as many as 50 residents reported seeing bright disc-shaped objects flying erratically in the night sky. So the all the motherfuckers police chief, was Junior pro, Garmini, and his assistant saying? responded to the flooding 911 calls regarding the unidentified flying object. Soon, they too could see the lights in the sky as they approached overhead. Local resident Ted Oliphant managed to capture this image using his Polaroid camera. In it, you can see a dark, disc-shaped object in the air. Ted Oliphant's famous Polaroid has since been archived with an Alabama historical group and is often considered hard evidence of the 1989 Fife UFO incident. Is that shit like this isn't the only historical mass shit? UFO sighting in Alabama either. On the evening of July 24, 1948, pilots Clarence Childs and John Witted were flying their Douglas DC-3 airplane from Houston to Atlanta when they encountered what they described as a UFO flying over Montgomery, Alabama. According to their account, the UFO approached their plane head-on and flew above them, revealing itself to be a cylindrical object with two rows of windows and an intense bluish-white light emanating from them. Hmm. UFO then flew off into the distance at high speed. The Charles Witted UFO encounter is considered by many to be one of the most well-documented UFO sightings in history. Both Charles and Witted were experienced pilots with good reputations, and their detailed descriptions of the UFO and its movements have been widely regarded as credible. In addition, several other witnesses on ground reported seeing the UFO at around the same time as the pilots. There have been various explanations proposed for the Charles Witted UFO encounter, including the possibility that it was a hoax or a misidentification of a known aircraft. However, some UFO researchers believe that it was a genuine encounter with an extraterrestrial spacecraft. They point to the fact that the UFO was able to fly at speeds and perform maneuvers that were far beyond the capabilities of any known aircraft at the time, as well as the fact it had a distinctly non-human made appearance. Huh. While it's impossible to definitively prove or disprove the existence of extraterrestrial life at this point, the Charles Witted UFO encounter remains an intriguing and mysterious event that continues to capture the imagination of people around the world. So it would seem the Margaret CCTV sighting is just another addition to Alabama's long history of mysterious UFO incidents. Yeah, that just sounds like some uh, time to move shit. You know what I'm saying? Time to move. What this the next one's been going fuck? viral this past couple of weeks. It's reported to have been filmed somewhere in Tanzania and appears to show something truly strange taking place. Take a look. What the the clip, which was uploaded to TikTok by Danny Cruz, that shit is fake as fuck. of some kind. The tail is being the some, the... somebody has got a rope attached to the tail, and is fucking shaking the tail and shit. So the yeah, it's definitely this is definitely set up. This is definitely fucking like you know like somebody fucking put this together. But this shit is still creepy as fuck. Like, what the fuck? Elm seems to have a tail and the legs of a goat. No one seems to know the full story behind this strange little clip, but some commenters said that the woman was being punished for being unfaithful to her husband. Tanzania is a country with a diverse population, and there are many different spiritual beliefs and practices present in the country. The majority of the population is Christian, with a significant minority good, being Trey. Muslim. There are also smaller numbers of Hindus, Buddhists, and followers of traditional African religions. Traditional African religions in Tanzania often involve the belief in a supreme being, ancestor worship, and the presence of spirits and deities in natural objects and phenomena. These beliefs and practices are often intertwined with daily life and are an important part of the cultural identity of many Tanzanians. Some Tanzanians may also believe in the existence of magic and the ability of certain individuals to perform magic or communicate with the supernatural. It's likely that some traditional African cultures in Tanzania include shamanic practices, although yeah, the specific sure. beliefs and practices may vary from yeah, one the community tail wasn't to another. Right. 
Shamanism is a spiritual practice that involves the use of altered states of consciousness to communicate with spirits and deities, often for the purpose of healing or divination. In some traditional African cultures, shamans, also known as healers or medicine men and women, may play a central role in the spiritual life of the community, providing spiritual guidance and performing rituals to communicate with the spirit world. So what do you think? Are we seeing some kind of wild magic at play here? No. Or is it all just a little too far-fetched? Yeah, we're seeing some bullshit. Let me know where you land on this strange piece of footage that in the staged. comments down below. Somebody staged this shit. <laughs> Somebody was trying to go viral. That's all In I can say. In late 2022, like, Reddit user Triple Z747's neighbor caught something unusual on their home security system. It's a little after 1 a.m. when this happens. Oh, look at the mist over there. Right above my head. <laughs> And like goes into the house. On the far right of the screen, a strange mist appears out of nowhere. It like disappears into the house. That's creepy. When the OP posted the clip to Reddit, they weren't making any assumptions. Instead, they were curious if anyone could explain the bizarre sighting. He noted that the camera is motion activated, so whatever it is, it was enough to trigger the camera to start filming. Naturally, a slew of Ghostbuster quotes poured into the hmm. comments section. What up, Toby? But a few said it could be someone smoking just outside of the view of the camera. Others suggested it could be steam from a vent or clothes dryer. So what do you think? Is there a natural way to explain the odd cloud of mist? Or is there something a little more mysterious going on here? Watch the clip again. Make your own mind up. Hmm. Buzz is a hell. You cheat in Africa, they call you a goat? I mean, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> in that village, apparently, or some shit. I don't know. Before we take a look at some eerie footage that's been captured in Pakistan, remember to hit that subscribe button, then tickle that little bell icon there and turn on all channel notifications. That yes. way you'll be in the loop Please every time we drop hit our that scary that little subscribe button videos. and that little baby little thing right there called the bail notification <laughs> thing right well, there. Well, Hoga are official <laughs> as a paranormal YouTube channel based in Pakistan. They travel the country in search of proof that ghosts really do exist. In this episode, they travel to a dilapidated old house that's long been abandoned. Locals say that the house is haunted by the spirits of dead children and that on some dark nights, you can actually see their shadowy silhouettes in the empty rooms of the deserted home. Oh, hell no. Spurred on by these rumors, the team of paranormal investigators begin to search the property. Before long, they spot something strange on the roof of the building. Oh, what the fuck? It looks like a strange, thin, humanoid figure. Oh, you better run. Then, moments later in one of the rooms, they spot a small child crouching in the corner. What the fuck? Yeah, I would have to. Yeah, fuck that. Time to go. I the cameraman no calls to his shit. colleague who rushes to the room. However, when they look in the room again, there's no one there. Spooked but determined, the team continues their search of the building. Bro, y'all don't have enough? Soon they spot something eerie in one of the rooms. Oh, multiple? Hello? Oh, hell no. 
बात तो सुनो बच्चों ए बात तो सुनो मेरी इधर आओ नहीं कहते कुछ इधर आ बात सुन अम्मा बात क्यों सुन रहे हो as if the shadows aren't eerie enough this happens yaar inke shadows se itna record nahi ho rahe inke paas ja rahe no shadowy children no. have now disappeared nowhere to be found you know Yeah, that's dumb. I'm not. I'm not playing What's with those. What's to be made kids? of this eerie footage? I mean, given up. that the locals <laughs> believe the old house is haunted, it Hell certainly no. does make you wonder whether something paranormal has been caught on camera here. <laughs> oh yeah, Toby. Tell the old lady I said hi. Well, I guess she probably just heard me then. Hi, old lady. Yeah, fuck that. I'm not going and playing with motherfucking little kids and shit. Especially little ghost kids, you know what I mean? That sounds that sounds awful. It sounds terrifying. It sounds crazy. <laughs> Most, uh, mysterious and unbelievable things caught on camera. Let's watch this one. I would have took off. How are you doing? I'm Callan, and this is Slapped Ham. Today we're looking at some mysterious things caught on camera. Callan's head, always, man. But... Callan's head is always like perfectly bald, like perfectly shaved and shit. That motherfucker be shiny as hell, bro. That shit be shiny, and you know he keep like this shiny as that shit is. You know he motherfucker keep that shit lathered up so that motherfucker don't burn, and, and he could wear that shit proud in the sun. You know what I'm saying? That motherfucker be like. Like a motherfucking diamond, you know what I'm saying? That shit is that shit is shiny as a motherfucker. I just gotta say, bro, you, Callan, you always got a really nice shaved head, sir. Uh, you know what I mean? There's never no like little, you know, five o'clock shadow si situation going on on the top of your dome, bro. You you always keep your shit fresh. You know what I'm saying? He keep that shit fresh, fresh. <laughs> we dive in. Remember to hit that subscribe button. Up, get ready for more creepy content. It's all good. Just like this. Yeah, that should be shiny as a motherfucker, bro. That should be shiny, shiny, yeah, all the time. But at least y'all caught that part. <laughs> Yo. Uh -uh. Yeah, I'm out of there. Fuck that. Oh no. Uh huh. Well, I'm good. Yeah, get so, out. Leave. Some time now, YouTuber Bobby Barnes has suspected his home might be haunted. Oh In fact, the activity no. became so frequent and strange, he began documenting it all on his YouTube uh, no, channel. No, you just World leave. Paranormal. Move the fuck out. In this clip, we see Bars rapping in a TikTok video. At first, you'd think it's just him spitting some mad fire, but soon something strange begins to happen in the background. Sonic is waving. He's like, I'm gonna smack you if you don't shut up, bruh. Oh no, he's bobbing his hand to the beat. In the background raises its no. arm, seemingly Fuck that. on its own. I don't know if I'm I don't know if I'm more scared that the go, that the little sonic ghost fucking poltergeist thing is like shaking his arm like yo that shit is fire because that shit was trash or that he moved his hand. I don't know which one is more concerning. You know what I'm saying? The fact that the poltergeist is encouraging this shit or that he's here. That there's a poltergeist. Like which one's worse? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Viewers immediately said it was the work of a poltergeist. A poltergeist is a type of ghost or supernatural entity believed to be responsible for physical disturbances, such as loud noises Bruh, I, and objects oh, moving or being no. thrown around. Yeah, I'm Some out. people believe that poltergeists Throw are malevolent all entities that, that seek to harm or scare people, you can keep while others all of think that they shit. may be the manifestation of a person's subconscious or repressed emotions. Given that Bars has spotted other activity in and around his home, it certainly does make you wonder whether his house could be haunted by some kind of unresolved spirit. That shit was garbage. Whoa! In early December 2022, Reddit user Expensive Ad 1774 spotted something mysterious flying through the night sky in Washington, D.C. Take a look. 
I knew it. I was going to see you something today. Oh, God. Three unidentified orange lights float in the sky. Whoa! Look, they're moving. Look how they're moving. They don't appear to be statically linked as each orb of light appears to move about. I knew it. I was going to see you something today. Oh, God. That's the same thing yeah, yeah. across that bridge. That shit look yeah, crazy. Yeah. That do look like some UFO shit. The lower line pulses in and out of sight. It's not flares, because look like moving away. Whoa. The camera holder is clearly floored by what he's seeing. And now Whoa. they're out. One of them is still up. Whoa. Where would I go? They're still there. You see him still? Yeah, I see one. At the end of the clip, it's hard to tell if the lines disappear or if they simply go behind the clouds in the foreground. Now they're gone. Yeah, that gone. shit would have been crazy Whoa. to see right there. Like, I, like yeah, that's one of those sightings where, like, you just, like, how do you explain that Whatever shit? You know what I mean? Is, like, it's definitely how do you mysterious. explain that shit? <laughs> Whoa. I need to talk to the president. One like. of the most famous <laughs> UFO sightings in Washington, D.C. is the 1952 incident that occurred on July 19th of that year. The event, known as the Washington Flap, involved the sighting of several unidentified flying objects over the city by multiple witnesses, <laughs> right? you gotta including be clear. You gotta clarify personnel. this. YouTube At 11.40 p.m. on July 19th, an air traffic controller named Edward Nugent spotted several unusual blips on his radar. I just gotta give a big shout out to Taylor again. I was just thinking about that shit. That shit is so tight. Shout out to Taylor for ordering the first high clothing hoodie. Gang, gang, gang. Shout out to Taylor, man. That shit's so tight. I just, I just got to give another shout out to that because that shit's super dope. Super dope. Working the night shift at Washington National Airport. Seven objects in total were pinging on the radar system flying 15 miles south, southwest of the city. Senior air traffic controller Harry Barnes was called in to witness the event as the objects weren't following any established flight paths. He's on record as saying, we knew immediately that a very strange situation existed. Their movements were completely radical compared to those of ordinary aircraft. Mm. When the objects were seen moving over the White House, Barnes immediately called Andrews Air Force Base to report the sighting. While at first the Air Force Base couldn't detect any unusual activity on their radar, Officer William Brady, who was manning the lookout tower, reported an unidentified ball of light. He's on record saying, the object, which appeared to be like an orange ball of fire trailing a tail, it was unlike anything I had ever seen before. He then said it took off at an unbelievable speed. Later, a Capital Airlines pilot spotted six bright lights in the sky while waiting for permission to take off from the runway. He described them as white, tailless, fast-moving lights that shifted in the sky over a 14-minute period. At 3 a.m., two F-94 Starfire fighter jets arrived, having been dispatched from Newcastle Air Base in Delaware. Damn, they did that shit as soon super as they hit serious. Washington, so that shit was real, bro. That the goes to show. Aliens glowing objects disappeared UFOs from all radar. The jets crafts. patrolled the skies for several oh, hours, real, eventually bro. returning to base due they to low took that fuel. Shit serious as However, right as soon there. as the jets left at 5.30 a.m., the unidentified objects reappeared on radar. This was enough to convince Harry Barnes that the objects were monitoring radio chatter and knew strategically when to disappear and reappear. This incident generated significant media attention and speculation <laughs> about bet, the possible Taylor, origin that, of the I, objects. I appreciate you guys. The Cedar Rapids and, Gazette like, ran really a front page article with the headline, that choice, Sources you know? Swarm Over Capital. And, yeah. The Air Force conducted an hard, investigation into the sightings the but were unable to identify the That's objects lit. or determine their origin. They concluded that the sightings were likely caused by natural phenomena or weather balloons. However, what? the public response to this conclusion <laughs> right. was less than enthusiastic. <laughs> and many still here. believe that it was an That's alien spacecraft said. visiting Earth from here. another world. The public outcry for further inquiry into what happened in July 1952 is still strong today. 
with some groups even issuing freedom of information. Is that hard, Toby? For any Just get them all. Information Just get them all, Toby. To <laughs> pick pick one, get one this week, get one, another one next week. Washington, DC <laughs> so on and so incident. forth. So you got them all. One of the most mysterious In UFO both hoodie and t-shirt form. <laughs> uh, that's how you do it, bro. You see, Taylor said, I'm just going to start with this one. I'll get the other ones later. So, it, you know, there's a, a, a strategic plan Exploring that she's got going on. As an up -and -coming so ghost you got to just kind of follow YouTube, suit, you know what I'm saying? Nick, the host, <laughs> travels around North America in search of ghosts and other supernatural activity. However, in this next short clip he sent us, it seems the haunting activity is a little closer to home. For some time now, Nick has suspected his house might be haunted by a spirit. I know you'll spirit, get them all eventually, well, Taylor. She... Back an entity from it, one of it was strategic. You had to get your favorite one while first. While sitting and watching some TV, and then so on so forth, happens you know? in his living room. <laughs> Watch. Out of nowhere, the pen on the coffee table rolls along. Yeah, fuck that. It's time to move. You can see what appears to be quite a genuine reaction from Nick as he notices the movement. So could Nick's home really be haunted? Could he have brought something back after one of his paranormal experiments? Hell yeah, he Let probably did. Let land on this clip in the comments down below. Yeah, fuck that, bro. That's why I don't want to go ghost In the late 18th century, <laughs> That's really the mysterious why I don't want to go. I don't genderless want to bring figure back. known only as public universal friend traveled throughout northeastern United States preaching That's a radical That's how you do it, Toby. Just religion. get one of everything, bro. It was said that the public yeah, universal friend it. had no name or identity, one of everything. only claiming to be the public universal friend and answering to no other title. Many believe them to be sent by God with a divine mission of bringing salvation and peace to all who listened. Some accounts describe the public universal friend as an eccentric preacher with an ability of speaking multiple languages fluently, while others say they were known for preaching sermons without books or notes, often lasting up to seven hours long. Historical records indicate that the public universal friend was born as Jemima Wilkinson in November 1752. However, after suffering from a severe illness, most likely typhus, it's said that Jemima died during a bout of fever. The following morning, according to reports, Jemima's body was reanimated. It lifted up from the coffin, immediately claiming to be public universal friend. They announced that they were neither male or female and refused to use gendered pronouns. They said that they had received holy communication with God via two archangels, claiming what? there's room, room, room in the many mansions of eternal glory for thee and for everyone. Historical descriptions say that the public universal what? friend wore androgynous clothing, mainly a long flowing black robe and spoke in a croaky, unearthly tone. The public <laughs> universal friend traveled throughout much of Northeastern there United no States preaching a new form of religion, eventually attracting a following that later became known as the Society of Universal Friends. Their core teachings spoke of an impending day of great judgment, a prophecy of the end of days that would wipe out those who had not repented of their sins. Yeah, you gotta get, then, you gotta on get May one, 19th, Toby, I'm telling 1780, you. you the daytime skies it. fell into an eerie darkness throughout most of what New up, England. Cutlass? How are you Military doing, personnel, brother? academics, and other notable public figures wrote about the bizarre event, calling it New England's Dark Day. It's reported to have started at around 10 a.m. The morning mysteriously fell black. The darkness lingered throughout the day and continued on into the evening. Villagers had to light candles in the middle of the day and roosters crowed and frogs croaked as if night had already fallen. In some parts, ash and cinders rained from the sky with many local priests declaring the end of days. The public universal friend took this bizarre event as a sign of vindication that the great judgment was indeed beginning. So what was actually happening? Historians yeah, believe that the most likely cause of New England's dark day good, was a combination bro. of widespread forest fires, thick fog, and heavy low-hanging clouds. Environmental researchers yeah, have been Liz, able to detect fire scars ASAP. in the trunk rings of trees in the Algonquin Rocky. Provincial Park in Ontario, Canada. They've been able to date the scars to approximately 1780, right when the skies turned black over New England. So who was the public universal friend? Were they really brought back from the dead with direct knowledge from God? 
were they able to predict New England's darkest day? Through a modern lens, the public universal friend is often seen as a pioneering leader in women's and transgender rights, being one of the first public figures hey, in America's gang, history gang. to identify so as non-binary. But whether they had a direct line to the word of God remains a topic of hot debate. Yeah, of debate. Religion is always fucking something that you can debate. This you know, photo, which was posted to Reddit circles, by user Tam1, was shit. captured in Ta Prom near the famous Angkor Wat ruins in Cambodia. The carving is dated it circa it's 1100 okay. 2023. We are going to show back, a dinosaur-like animal. Back, bounce more back. Specifically, spectacular. You know what I'm saying? Now, what's particularly interesting is that the first manner. fossilized remains of a Stegosaurus weren't discovered until 1877. They were unearthed by paleontologist Othniel Charles Marsh in Western North America. So how is it that an ancient Cambodian sculptor would know what a Stegosaurus looks like? When the post hit Reddit, it got thousands of upvotes and hundreds of comments from viewers trying to explain the mystery. All kinds of wild and wonderful yeah, theories on the have been thrown uh, around. Level you are, yeah. Some said I gotta make it sure had that something the to do with alien inter- Let me pause this real quick. Yeah, I gotta make sure that the uh, for this the new merch that I actually set up the discounts on the new merch because I know it's set up for the old stuff. I gotta make sure that it's set up for the new stuff, um, but it will be um, you will be able to use the discounts from the membership on the new stuff. Yes, um, if it's not up right now <laughs> or like if the uh, merch codes aren't attached to the new merch, I don't know that I did. I don't know. I don't know that I did, but it will be. So, don't worry. Appearance <laughs> and that they gave and knowledge to the way more people of coming. Angkor Wat. I got some. Some even we mentioned. got Valentine's coming around the corner. I'm doing a Valentine's uh, edition hoodie, um, and actually we're gonna probably do <clears throat> Valentine's sweatsuits. It's gonna be super limited edition. It's gonna be uh, probably probably no more than maybe like ten you know, 10, 15, maximum, maybe 20, depending on the, like the, the outcry for, for them, you know, the need for them. Um, but yeah, we're about to do some super limited edition, special, like Valentine's edition uh, sweatsuits. So be on the lookout, cause I'll be getting those together. And they're gonna be, it's gonna be universal. Like it's gonna be some shit, like if you're a dude, you could get away wearing it and put it together, especially like for Valentine's Day. You could do like a little, you know, his and her little matching outfit situation. But then for like the ladies, it's gonna be something that like you guys were just gonna like dig. You know what I'm saying? I think y'all are gonna love this idea that I got in my brain for some Valentine's shit. So stay tuned. Let's go. <laughs> I'm travel playing a part in the carving. <laughs> Others thought what up, what up, what up, Texas? still roamed the ancient jungles of Cambodia. The blue at that one, time. yeah. This is so. Here's the uh, here's the one of the new designs. It's it doesn't look as good in the camera because of my green screen. So some of the color gets washed out because of the green screen. And there's a bunch of not a bunch, but there's some green obviously in the design. So it gets washed out a little bit. So you're not seeing like the true greatness of this logo or this design. But yeah, this one is called the Honest Heart. So this is the first promo hoodie. Uh, so it's printed on the front, and then there's a big print on the back. The same print, just bigger on the back. And then the actual hoodies that you guys are gonna get. So every hoodie that I'm printing, like you guys are all gonna get, there's an additional print. There's gonna be an arm print. Um, so whatever the design is that you get, I'm thinking that it's gonna say that name on the arm so like for instance taylor she got the intelligent mind hoodie and so on the arm of her hoodie it's gonna say intelligent mind on the hoodie you know what i'm saying like just straightforward bang in people's face like that's what it is you dig what i'm saying so yeah little subtle touches you know what i'm saying we, we really about to elevate i want the merch to be just dope as fuck i want y'all to be like really into the merch want to wear that shit every day you know whether you, you support me or not like i just really want the merch to represent you know us the the family the situation like you know what i'm saying and even if you don't know who i am or what i'm about like the merch should be fucking dope as fuck you know what i'm saying regardless like so i want people when you're wearing it it's like someone who doesn't even know me could be like, yo, that shit's tight. 
I really like that. Where did you get it? And you could just be like, oh, from this website right here. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, it's this guy's stuff. And, and all of a sudden you get to introduce me to a whole new group of people. They get to come join the family, potentially grab some, you know, dope ass fucking, you know, clothing and shit on top of it. And we just build some really cool shit. So that's the goal, bro. Like I'm really focusing and honing in on like the creative abilities that I have and really trying to make some cool, cool shit, bro, that stands out above all the other fucking YouTuber shit, bro. Even being as small as I am, I want to give y'all the dopest shit that that I fucking possibly can, bro. Like, the dopest. So, yeah. Shout out to y'all, man. <laughs> a more grounded theory suggests it's just a case of misidentification. It could actually just be a pig in front of a floral background making it look more dinosaur-like yep, and, and than I, it and, actually and is. Liz, the cool Whatever thing the is, I think my be, quality's even gotten better, so I'm just saying. to spark the saying. curiosity of tourists and locals alike. And unless someone can definitively prove what it actually depicts, it'll continue to be a mystery for the ages. Like, you guys see, like, I wear these, my hood, I wear we my hoodies, bro. Take a look at something bro. weird that's so been caught on security footage. I wouldn't wear them if I didn't like them Remember to hit that subscribe button, then tickle that so. little bell icon there and turn on all channel notifications. Me, that way you'll be in the loop every time we drop our scary and creepy back videos. back to this video. <laughs> our last clip of the day comes from Twitter user Sidio Paranormal. It's some security footage captured in an unknown location in late 2020. It's approaching midnight when the camera suddenly catches this. Here it comes. Oh, we've seen this weird ass video before. A mysterious white wisp flies from left to right. Here it comes. Yeah. That'd be creepy as shit to see. It's like a little ghost or some shit. Motherfucker in a, it doesn't appear to be passing sheet. dust or a strange <laughs> reflection of light. So what could it be? Some viewers thought it looked like a serpent-like creature. Others said it's a classic boo ghost, white and all. Unfortunately, there's almost no info on this clip, <laughs> so it's impossible to dig into Hell the Hell yeah, Toby. I'm telling you, they're about to be tight, bro. They're about to be super lit. Because I'm going to make... It's going to be a his and hers version. So, like, I'm going to make the, the, the girl version, like even girlier. Like, it's going to, like, the girl, the women, y'all are going to love it. You know what I'm saying? Um, actually, I have a hood. Let me show you the hoodie I made for my wife the other day. This is actually a hoodie that you guys are going to be able to buy here soon. So, for all you women out there, we are, like, I'm expanding my horizons. Like, I want you guys to feel included with the designs and some of the stuff that we're doing. So, this new design is not going to be a part of the um, high clothing necessarily, um, but it is going to be a clo or a piece of clothing or a design that you'll be able to get from us that is going to just be a part of like this new female driven vision that me and my wife are working on. So, one second, let me show you this hoodie that I made for her the other day. Oh, did she wear it? Oh, she wore it. Damn, never mind. Never mind, she wore it to work. I can't show you because she wore it to work. <laughs> I was about to be like, yeah, y'all are going to like this. But yeah, I'll have to show it to you uh, Sunday or tomorrow. No, I can show it to you tomorrow because she, I don't think she, no, she does work tomorrow. Maybe she doesn't. I don't know. If she doesn't wear it tomorrow, I will show it to you guys tomorrow on tomorrow's live. But... Is lit. Um, Cutlass, you just there should be a, a join button down below. So if you've subscribed, which you should be a subscriber already, Cutlass. But if not, once you hit the subscribe button, the join button should be in the same place that the subscribe button was. You know what I'm saying? B before you subscribe, um, they basically made it so that the join button only appears once you subscribe. So it should be in the same place as the subscribe. See how like if I put, uh, go up here on the uh, Slapped ham, see how it says subscribe, and then next to the subscribe, it says join. You just hit that join button and go hit the go through and pick whatever membership you want. We got three different options to choose from. So, and yeah, I highly suggest you know, everybody who loves the lives and stuff and wants to get an extra live uh, every week, 
because we uh, are doing Sunday lives, members only, mem member live every Sunday. Every Sunday, you never know what we might do on the members lives because we're going to do music reactions over on the members lives. Um, members uploads. I'm doing music reactions again on the members uploads only. Um, fucking what else are we doing? We're gonna do some. We're gonna do some cool shit over in the members stuff, bro. The year's just getting started. We're trying to just kind of get everything in order as far as like scheduling and stuff. Um, I'll be doing some um, recording tomorrow uh, morning, most likely. Yeah, probably tomorrow morning. Um, and then, yeah, you know, we'll go live tomorrow evening. So we just getting everything situated and things is gonna be litty like six titties. <laughs> yeah, so yep. Um, Liz, you might just have to just update your uh just update it. Um and if anything, if they do charge you, yeah, it it should be four ninety nine. The only reason why I think yeah, I don't even know. I don't even think we ever had it set at five ninety nine. So if anything, YouTube is just charging you a dollar. If if anything, <laughs> like I, I I don't know, because yeah, they're all there's two ninety nine, four ninety nine, and nine ninety nine are the three different options. So five ninety nine is not even an option. Maybe just I mean you might be able to cancel and then rejoin under uh, the four ninety nine one again and see if it like corrects itself. That that would be my only suggestion to fix it honestly um but yeah appreciate you regardless um yeah trey you definitely got to join back up bro sunday is going to be the first members live man sunday is first members live bro so you know if you can if any of you guys can and you want to you know that's the first thing is you have to want to first and if you want to Come join your boy. You know what I'm saying? Come join your boy on Sundays when we turn up and turn out and do what we got to do. Because that's what we do. Gang, gang, gang. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe I did have it at $5.99 back in the day when we first started it. I, I, I know because we've had it at the three-tier thing for a while. But you're right. It might have been $5.99 a long time ago. Huh. Yeah, I would say I would say it's sign up or maybe just cancel it and then re-sign back up. Uh Cutlass, try on your computer. Sometimes the uh, or go to your browser on your phone or whatever. Um cuz the other sometimes the app be tripping. You might need to update the app too. Um and then sometimes you might need to just unsubscribe and then resubscribe and see if it pops up. Um, but yeah, the best suggestion is get off the app and log into your YouTube on an actual browser, either through, you know, your phone browser or your computer browser. So yeah, but let's jump into this police video real quick. You know, I'm sharing a trip, trip, jump in the police video right here, right here, right here, right here. One time, two time, three time, four time, six time, seven time. I think I missed five times. <laughs> I did. I went from four to six i don't know why but i did uh-huh uh-huh yeah 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 uh-huh yeah anyways columbus police body cameras officers find a man passed out in his car with two children and two glizzies what the fuck was this dude doing what was he doing you about to find out i mean obviously he was sleeping can you get out the car for me just step out of the car for me real quick sir this one okay yeah, you can grab her. Put your hands on the dashboard, sir. Wait, so why? I mean, obviously, the little girl needs to be in a damn car seat. Step out of the car. I wonder what exactly got them pulled over. Was it the little girl being in the front seat? Probably not, you know, buckled in correctly. That's got to be what it was. On what? March 14th, 2021, at approximately 8.26 a.m., officers with the Columbus Division of Police were dispatched to a Safeway Mini Mart on West Broad Street in Columbus, Ohio, on a call about a man and a woman possibly overdosing in their vehicle. Um, I just pulled up to the store, and there's two people passed out in a car with babies in there. You can tell they're pretty hot. 
the store owner said that the ambulance was already here and said they was okay. They're not okay. The officers arrived on scene, found one man, one woman, and two small children sleeping in a car. During the course of their oh, are they investigation, homeless? they also located two firearms. So somebody called them in. So they, they have to be homeless. Yeah, it's this one. Baby's asleep too. Baby's asleep too. They're getting yeah. a, another baby in the front seat. 191. That tag number is L560818. This looks like a situation where they're homeless or something. And it's on a Chrysler 200. Copy. I almost guarantee it, like. Such a weird situation to be passed out in the parking lot. Look the kids and the blizzies in the car. Maybe they're traveling or something and, and too broke to get a hotel. Just need to get a few minutes. I don't know. Okay. It is a weird situation, like though, to, like, park in the fucking in parking like lot of a convenience store slash liquor store. Like, it would have been more convenient. Like, why not just go to a Walmart parking lot or something? You know what I'm saying? Like, somewhere where, like, it's going to be less conspicuous and less obvious that you're just kind of, like, you know, sleeping. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, come on. Like, let's be real. Nobody going to give a fuck or bat an eye in a Walmart yeah. parking lot. But in a little a convenience store parking, parking lot, like, yeah. not enough goddamn parking spots. Motherfuckers need to be coming Excuse and going. Me. That's why there's a come and go. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers need to come and go. He's get like your shit and get the fuck him. on. He's got sweat all over Excuse me. Buddy was hey not. Can you talk to me? What's going on? Can you unlock the doors? Can you unlock the door for me? Yeah, it's beaming. Can you just open the door for me? What's going on? You fell asleep. Okay, thank you. Hi, baby. You doing okay? <laughs> Yeah. Do you have an ID on you, sir? Can you run down there, please? Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Can we just get it? Where's your ID at? Ma'am? Where's your ID? Do you have an ID? Um, not a, I have one. They put holes in it last one. Was That's two. fine. I just need your identification. What's, I just I can just take it down. What's your name? Uh, Malcolm. Malcolm? Why would you lie about Malcolm? your Hi, name? Baby. Malcolm, what's your last name? Malcolm. What's your last name? Jamar. Jamar is your last name? Spell it for me. J A M. Uh huh. A R. What's your birthday? Lamar. Lamar. Wow. What's your last name, Malcolm? Mitchell. What? Your last name is Mitchell. I thought it was Lamar or Jamar. Earlier you told me it was Jamar. Is that your middle name? 
Lamar is your middle name? Your first name is Malcolm, though, right? Looks like it's going to be uh, pulled in by He's special big yeah. What's yeah, your date of birth? So, What's your birthday? It's not really cold because we didn't get any sleep. Because we went to the hospital because he's got hand, foot, and mouth. Okay. And thresh. But we didn't leave yet, so I don't know if they recalled or something. But There's someone just trying to check on you. Yes, ma'am. What's your birthday? Man, so then why would you lie about it? He must have warrants and shit because he's an idiot. That, that, must, that must be what it is. <laughs> so what do you guys, why are you here? Why, why, obviously this is the second time we've been called out. Why are we sitting in the parking lot here? They're peanut butter cookies, literally. Okay. So you're just sitting here for the peanut butter cookies? Literally. There's, no, there's no, no other reason why you're sitting here? Okay, I'm gonna go over and get her information. She's not her information. I'll just got it, okay. What kind of lying ass shit is this? This nigga said okay, peanut so butter cookies. Where were you like, before what? you ended up here? <laughs> Like, what the hell is he talking about? Hey, Goose. When I was 18, I slept in a van in a, uh, on my grandfather's property for a year. Real shit, Dude, actually. Are you feeling okay, sir? Because you are sweating like crazy. Yes, ma'am. No. I just, I'm the sun already. I'm sitting in the sun, literally. Like, like you have steam and sweat rolling off your body. Off my like, head. Yeah, like there's steam like coming off your head. It looks like football, football, steam and sweat. Sir, so can you get out of the car for me? Step out of the car for me real quick, sir. Okay. My you can, yeah, you can grab her. Put your hands on the dashboard, sir. He's an idiot. Step out of the car. Put your hands in the dashboard. Oh, so he was tucked up under his coat. Step out of the coat. You're a dummy, bro. That shit makes no sense, bro. Why? Why? Come and face the car. Ma'am, stay in the car. That's fine. Stay in the car. Just stay in the car. Put your arm down. Man, you just got child endangerment. All sorts of shit, bro. You're an idiot. Up. And then, for, then when he leaned forward, that's when I saw the gun in there. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't even see that. I was. I was trying to tell you that I saw it in the yeah, glove, I saw glove that in department. The glove Damn. So you got two? Are oh, you an idiot, bro? Are you real dumb? I came up here. There's a second gun in the glove box. She said it's the glove box of the truck. No, there's one in the glove box. Okay. Because the baby opened the glove box and we saw the butt of the gun. Oh. He pushed it shut. 
to turn the key and drop the key down there. Okay. When he leaned forward was when his jacket flopped open. That's when the gun was taken out of his coat. Yeah. She said that she from, owns two guns in this car. Yeah. One, she said one's in the trunk. Oh, there better not okay, be so fentanyl one, in the well, car. What the so fuck? The, the one... This is the Glock 17. Bro. Yeah. So, he... So, he... Yeah, so he said he was trying to teach her how to properly carry a firearm. The star of today's show, Malcolm L. Mitchell, is no stranger to the criminal justice system. Of course not. He has previous convictions of assault, domestic violence, possession of drugs, trafficking in drugs, as well as felony counts of possession of a firearm and felony domestic violence. At the time of his arrest, he was on parole for a previous conviction and was ordered so to report that's to why prison I gave the fake name. I knew it. He I had something, something about the incident warrant, from today's video, parole. which occurred Same almost a thing, year ago, worse. has not yet been heard by a grand jury. That means you already got time lingering. Oh, that's going right back to jail. Dummy. Some people are just stupid. Mm, mm, mm. That was stupidity at its fucking finest right there. You got to be a, a tard, in my opinion, to do some stupid ass shit like that. Why you got to be that stupid? Damn. Some people's kids. Some people's children. <laughs> All right, let's try to find one more, and then I think I'm going to be out of here for the news night. Jim Rollins had pepper spray as a West stalker accused of breaking into YouTuber Star's home. Okay, okay. Let's, let's check that out. Are we doing this? Are we just throwing it in? Carrots. Do I have to cut, like cut those or shred them? This is the YouTube song they're talking about. about. YouTuber Jenna Marbles and her husband have two frightening encounters at their Los Angeles home, saying they fought off an alleged stalker with pepper spray. We take a deep dive into celebrity stalking cases with former SWAT and sheriff deputy Chad Ayers. That shit is so Ayers. crazy that you can Welcome get obsessed enough to stalk somebody, bro. Such a weird fucking... Thought process to me to have. had a strange and volatile encounter. It's been reported that a stalker showed up at the Los Angeles home of Marbles greyhounds. and her new husband, Julian Solomita. Apparently, this unidentified woman was looking for Solomita. She showed up twice, and whatever happened, Solomita ended up pepper spraying Dude, her. Get that both dog off the times. counter. That's nasty. She was then taken to the hospital, and she like will dogs, face a damn. felony stalking charge. Not on the counter. Now, at the time this all went down, how tiny Marbles it is. was apparently upstairs in her home. But unfortunately for celebrities, stalking is not an uncommon occurrence. So let's bring in former SWAT and Sheriff Deputy Chad Ayers to give us. I don't more know how insight. much he'll get, Chad, brother, but you again for stopping. Like to, before we go into this. To answer your question, the reality is, is he's already facing whatever time he was dealing with on the previous case. Like he was on parole. So that means whatever, you know, time you still had is you're still kind of facing it. You're just getting able, you're able to do it in the free world, essentially, right? But you're not really free. <laughs> you know what I mean? You better be on your best motherfucking behavior. So he's gonna have to deal with that time regardless. And then whatever, you know, new charges they decide to slap on it. Um that's to be determined because they haven't actually taken it to to trial or whatever or to court. So I don't know. I mean, I, I, it's hard to say. Like, he may get no extra time. They may just make him go back to prison for the duration of whatever parole time he had and just call it a day um, because that would suck regardless too. Uh, they may go to, uh, I mean, I don't even know. I mean, they may add a couple years. They may add more than that. Like, you just never know. I don't know. You know, it's hard I to bought. tell. But he's for sure Absolutely. doing whatever it's time he bad. had already. Okay, so what let's up, Casey start girl? with the basics with Solomita's reaction to this alleged stalker. He pepper sprayed her. Is that within his rights? 100%. If, if he can just... Right, this, is, this shit is boring. Fuck that. We're not ending the video live on this shit. <laughs> I thought it was going to be a video of this motherfucker pepper spraying some motherfuckers, but that is not it. So, you know what? We are going to not end the video on that. Let me see if there's a new scary cherry, because sometimes there'll be some cool videos in that. Mm. 
No, not really. Or those weird compilations these days. I don't want to do that. Chilling scares. Let's see if there's any other six disturbing things. Caught. Oh, yeah, let's do this one right here. Boom. We got six disturbing things caught on uh, home security footage. In 2015, a couple in San Jose, California were the victims of yeah, a home Yeah, super invasion. sad to see for sure. The intruders were never identified. It just the police recommended the two some invest in some home security bro. cameras to protect against future just break-ins. Another fucking and so the couple did. They set up a total of six different cameras around their house. Common. Then, on May 8th of that same year, these cameras would capture a second break-in. Two men wearing black clothes climb a fence into the backyard, where they're shown finding an unlocked sliding glass door. They walk inside it. Okay, if you've been broken into one time, would you not be more overly cautious to lock every motherfucking door and window in your house anytime you're either home or, like, I mean, really, when you're home and not home? Like, what do you, like, come on, bro. Immediately go into the kitchen. One of them is seen disconnecting a phone setting on the counter. They proceed to search the kitchen, opening different cabinets and drawers. From this, they find kitchen knives, which they take with them to arm themselves. Caught on a different camera, they're next seen running upstairs, kitchen knives in hand. They must have heard somebody upstairs. As they're searching the rooms upstairs, one of the men comes across a locked door the door to the master bedroom he puts his ear to the door and hears a baby crying inside the room was a family friend named rosie and the two homeowners child rosie was babysitting for them when the intruders entered the home hearing the crying the man alerted his partner that people were inside Damn, instead bro. of getting spooked and leaving the men go up to the door and aggressively start kicking it they hit it with such force that they managed to kick a hole in it they then thrust knives through the hole Rosie took the couple's child and retreated to the bathroom, unlocking that door as well. She screamed out that she called the police. This would work. The men finally started running away before they could fully break into the bedroom. Wow. Police reviewed all the footage, but were never able to identify the men. Of course not. Their true motives remain unknown. They wanted to rob. It's hard to believe they were only trying to rob the place, seeing that they disconnected the phone. They were just down they to, to do whatever they needed to to knives. get what they wanted. They also didn't immediately leave upon finding people Shows inside. Shows how desperate people really Instead, are they tried days. breaking down a door to get to them. I mean, this was in 2015, but people, shit, it's only fucking This is the worse footage from a home security camera in Vacaville, California. Desperate as fuck. It was April when this footage was taken, and during that time of year, it's common to see a lot of activity in the form of kids walking home from school each afternoon. On this day, at some point, a girl with a backpack on is shown walking into frame. She was walking home from school like everyone else. However, she had been being followed for several blocks by a man in a dark colored Pontiac. She noticed this, and so she used a large truck parked on the side of the road to hide. That's smart as fuck. That's why you gotta be hyper aware of your surroundings. She is smart as a motherfucker, bruh. Holy, she's smart. She abruptly stops walking while she's out of view of the Pontiac. The driver stops, expecting her to come back into view. When she doesn't, he stalls there for a while before slowly driving off. The girl she is left standing there, it. unsure of what to do next. Eventually, she sees the car coming back and decides to stay put behind the truck. Smart. She's fucking smart. No, go back, go back, go back. The Pontiac drives by and then reverses to try and talk to the girl. But she continually repositions herself out of view. Finally, he drives off again and the girl makes a run for it. Run, 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 run. Yeah, After hell receiving yeah. multiple tips about the driver and his car, the police started an investigation. A 24-year-old man was identified as the driver. He was interviewed, but not arrested. He technically hadn't committed any crime, and therefore police couldn't really do anything. Whether or not the man was actually planning something that day is unknown. Hell yeah he was, he's fucking creepy. 
Fucking dickhead. Ali Porath is a mother of two daughters, one 13 years old and one three years old. On the night of February 20th, 2022, the three of them went shopping together. Their home security camera would show them returning home. They're seen walking inside and closing the door behind them. Shortly after, a man walks into frame from around their parked truck. They didn't lock the door. The very first thing he does is try to open the door. Who are you talking to? Why? Why? Oh, they did lock it, okay. Good. like a creep after knocking He's a few fucking... times the man walks away however they later found Scorpion out through a neighbor's tattoo. camera that for the next five minutes he walks around the house on his phone ali further reviewed the videos and found that it appears the man had been following them in his car all the way from the store a few seconds after they park in the driveway his car drives a bit further and parks a few houses down after a few more seconds he gets out and starts walking towards them Thankfully, wow. they were able to get everything inside and the door locked before he got there. Ali he ended by writing, hunting, bro. I don't know what this man's intentions Creepy were, ass but I don't think it was to rob us. I do believe that this was random and that we are not specifically targeted, but that he saw an opportunity when he saw a woman and two girls go into a house alone. Police were alerted, and they did search the area, but the man in the video was never found. In October of 2016, yeah. a family in Florida noticed multiple things missing from inside their home. The night before, Damn, everything Casey, was there, oh, that's crazy. but when they woke up, stuff was missing. To figure out where it went, they reviewed their home security cameras. At 1.30 in the morning, this is what the cameras captured. Wait, what? Fucking serious, bro. Wow. What's up, babe? The bold man walks around the house fucking, while bro. three children are sleeping on couches only feet away from him. He walks around them looking for valuables and hands what he finds to another man standing just outside, this one armed. The family immediately called the police upon seeing the footage. Police opened an investigation, but never found the two men in the video. Of course they never did. Police believe that had anyone in the they house woken never up find the, the break robbers, in, bro. they likely would have been <laughs> shot. <laughs> the police never find motherfuckers that rob you. Damn, a woman in Hudson, Wisconsin, say, opened her blinds one morning and noticed something in the snow the outside her window. Like never. She went outside and realized she was looking at footprints. The prints walked right up to her bedroom window and then back the way they came. Worried someone deliberately looked inside her window, the woman set up a security camera outside pointed towards her window. A few nights later, the camera recorded the man who made the footprints coming back. Fucking creepy ass peeping Tom motherfucker. What the fuck? The man is shown clearly peering in the window. Police were alerted and shown the video. After doing some digging, they were able to trace the vehicle leaving the scene to a man named Robert Cessna, a highly reputable executive for the company 3M. Wow! According to his LinkedIn profile, Robert Cessna is a global key account vice president at 3M, and he shows similarities to the man in the video. Robert was contacted by police, but denied it was him. Bullshit! Police then interviewed several neighborhood witnesses, and along with other evidence, were able to confirm that he was lying. He was the man in the video. 
Yeah, Robert he Cessna is. was ultimately charged with felony stalking and later fired from his executive position. Good fucking weirdo. Margaret Woodward was a 68-year-old living in Long Eaton, a town in England. Throughout the year 2013, her home had been the target of multiple break-ins. A total of five had occurred, and so she finally took the advice of police and installed home security cameras. Caught on the cameras, a sixth break-in occurs around one in the morning. A man is seen silently walking around while Margaret is sleeping in her living room. Wow, this shit is nuts, bro. People are bold. How do you rob, like... She is asleep right there, and how does she not notice? But he was in and out of there, like, here, I'm gonna just take the purse right here. Oh, he took it to the other room, went through it, and is putting it back now. Wow. That is creepy, bro. I'll make the request. I just need you to get him on the phone. Like He's in there watching TV and shit. As friends, I would have to advise He's already done 35 years. I'm not. You're going to have a friend for all that. You're going to have to kill him for the prison murder. Well, the upstate DA and the warden get what they want. The man is able to take multiple wow. belongings, all while Margaret has no idea. She doesn't wake up until he sets off an alarm. She then gets out of her chair and chases him with a cane. Using the footage, police were finally able to identify the man. He was 51-year-old Patrick Reed and was responsible for all six break-ins. Oh, well, he finally got one. Hey! $1, for <laughs> they Patrick identified one of these motherfuckers. In prison. Damn. That shit is wild, bro. That's a buck of wild shit. All right, hold on. I want to do one more. I want to do one more, bro. Let's find one, one more under the rainbow. Yep. Just like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's see what Sir Spooks is talking about. Oh, he hasn't uploaded anything for 2020. I oh, know he has, but it's this long ass fucking video. We definitely ain't watching no two hour fucking video. Fudge that. Fudge it. Fudge it. Ooh, nope. All these ones are long as shit, too. All right, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. We're going to find one more. If we don't, we don't, but we will because I'm not going to stop looking until we find one more. One more. <laughs> oh, you know what? We could do... Let me see. Where is it at? Here he is. You see, he usually always has some good shit. Here we go. Look, and it's right on up the alley that we, shit we was doing. Scary videos caught on Ring Cameras Volume 5. Let's go. If there's one thing I've learned from doing these ring videos, it's that having a drugged up person ringing your Shout doorbell at off Mr. hours in the night is more likely than I would have ever thought. In this video, a confused looking man approaches a random porch holding what appears to be a plastic bag and a roll of toilet paper. <laughs> right from the moment he gets you on take the porch, a shit. you can tell something is off by his nervous, almost twitchy behavior. Yeah, he's a drug addict who's trying to do something stupid to... It appears the man could possibly fix. be on meth or some other hard drug. Yeah, for sure. I think that's an obvious one. When the homeowner answers through the closed door, the man clearly has a hard time figuring out how to identify himself. And when his face gets close to the camera, you can see how dilated his pupils are, confirming he's definitely under the influence of drugs. Uh, uh, this is, um, it's who? Uh, my name is James. <laughs> Hi, my name is James. The homeowner asks who he's looking for. Pay attention to the name he gives. Uh, who are you looking for? Uh, 
So sir. Uh, Sammy. The first name Sosa. he gives is Sosa. Is he looking for Sammy, Sammy Sosa? Sammy Sosa, like the baseball player. It might have been the first name he could think of while trying to come up with a fake friend he was looking right. for. Right. Fuck out of here. What's your name? James. And who are you looking for? No, a friend of mine. No friend of yours lives here, buddy. And I got a Glock over here ready for you. So if you don't get the fuck off my porch, I'm going to unload it on your fucking face. Get the fuck off my porch. <laughs> That's how you use your goddamn ring camera. He said, look, ain't no friend of yours here in this goddamn house. But it's what is here in this house is me and this goddamn Glock. And if you don't get on my goddamn porch, I'm going to unload this bitch in your face. <laughs> I'm not sparing shit. I'm giving you all these bitches, bro. All these motherfucking rounds is going in your face. You ain't even gonna have a face no more, motherfucker. Closed casket, bitch. That's how you use that motherfucker right there. That's how you use that shit, bro. That's how, what up, Heather? What up, uh, Northern Downpour? That's how you use a motherfucking ring camera, bro. I be, I be wondering why people be not just using that voice feature and be telling people, look, get your ass out of here before I motherfucking blow your shit off. You upset through this dough. I right, get the fuck out of here. You see, look, he turned his ass around and walked right away. He had nothing else to say, nothing left to say. There's nothing. You're right, sir. Let me go ahead and walk my ass and get, get my ass on down the street. You're right. You're right. You're right. That's all you needed to do. He said, I'm going to unload this Glock in your motherfucking face. <laughs> right. That's how you do that shit. The reason why he was trying to get into the house is anybody's guess. Right. Which is perhaps the scariest part of situations like this. The homeowner handled it perfectly, Hell communicated yeah. through the door before opening it. Yep. And after catching on to the man's suspicious behavior, he made the man on his porch aware of the fact that he had a gun and was willing to yeah. use it. Hey, I got Even this if he Glocky, didn't actually baby. have a gun, the threat was still an effective way to get the Glocky man away from his front door. ready for you if you don't get off my porch. This next one is really disturbing. The person who uploaded this video is neighbors with the actual would-be victim. In the oh, video caught by the, the ring camera, weird three armed masked men are seen approaching the front door to the house. The one in front armed with what appears to be oh, an assault that. rifle. Oh, the masked man who approached the door keeps trying to block the view of the camera with his glove. Though there's no sound, it seems they're contemplating continuing their attempted at break-in due to the you doorbell got a camera, camera with no sound on Based it. Based on body language, it appears the one with the assault rifle is apprehensive. But one of his accomplices motions for him to go back to the door multiple times. Since the camera was covered by the person's glove for most of the footage, we can't see what exactly they were doing for most of it. But luckily, the homeowner didn't answer the door, and the three armed men were not able to enter the house. Good. Okay. The following footage is viewer submitted. <laughs> In the video, there's a man standing there in front of the house, cursing, seemingly talking to himself for 10 to 15 minutes. Without a little background context, it wouldn't exactly be unsettling per se. But when you learn why the man is standing there, it becomes a little more uncomfortable. A family member of the homeowner was mauled by a pack of dogs and bitten at least 12 times. The man who owned the dogs came to their house and stood on the front step muttering and cursing for 15 minutes until the police came. What? Um, he's just having a He's just having one of them episodes You ever been so like super mad about some shit Or like frustrated about some shit That like you just sit there and have a conversation, you know, just, I mean, with yourself, essentially. I mean, and, and not in like a crazy way. Like, you just you just need to say shit out loud. You know what I'm saying? You got to be, you got to say it it's because it's pent up and you just need to get it out. You know what I'm saying? And regardless of if there was somebody to actually hear you and have a conversation back, the reality is you're not trying to have a conversation. You just want a motherfucker to listen to you rant and talk the shit that you need to talk so you could feel better. You know what I mean? So it kind of seems like that's what's happening. Like he probably lost his dogs or got fined something super crazy 
um, which is, I mean, keep your dogs on a leash, you know what I'm saying? And, and in your backyards, like, so you're, you know, you're, your, your responsibility. So, yeah, but this seems like one of those situations where he's just like super upset and he's just like, he's trying to rationale, like, or, uh, not rationale, but basically just like work out this like situation in his head and with himself and he's just kind of talking out loud. So, this one's not as crazy as some of the other shit. I can threaten her. When the hell did I even make Like, she thinks I don't know where she lives. I've been knowing. I've been knowing. The man seemed unstable just from the video alone, not even factoring in the fact that he owned a pack of untrained, aggressive dogs. This one is a great example of why situational awareness is so important. A couple's ring doorbell video caught a duo of wigged, armed aggressors who had been following them home. The couple said they were walking home when a man and woman started following them all the way to their front door, where the male aggressor pointed a gun at the back of their heads. Oh, we've seen this shit. They got slammed. <laughs> the door got slammed on this motherfucker. And he, they was out immediately. You thought Luckily, he was the couple to hurried in and slammed the door shut first thing. And the wigged aggressors turned and ran towards their getaway vehicle, laughing. Minutes after the aggressors sped off, they robbed another person at gunpoint, this time successfully. Luckily, only one day after the video was released to the media, they a got person arrested. who recognized the male gunman turned him in and he was arrested, though his name hasn't been released to the public. This is if a the minor. couple had not immediately gone inside and slammed the door, who knows what may have happened. It's because he's a minor. This next one is That's an example of how why. just the presence of a doorbell camera can be a deterrence. Here we see a man in an apartment complex going up to somebody's door, pretending to be police so that the person on the other side would open up. Whether he knew the people who lived there or not is unknown, but obviously whatever would have happened if the door was opened wouldn't have been good. Police! Oh yeah? As soon as he glances over to the camera, <laughs> Look you at can see the expression face. on his Stupid. face that says it all. Fucking idiot. A couple seconds later, he leaves, and it sounds Rain. like he says, oh shit, I'm in the wrong one. Oh shit, I'm in the wrong one. Which my take on it would be he realized what he just did was all on video. So to play it off or give himself some sort of out, he thought by saying he's at the wrong room on video would somehow save himself from possible incrimination. This one is really upsetting, but thankfully no one got hurt. On September 14th of 2022, two arms masked men entered the home of an elderly couple in Virginia and ordered them into a closet where they would be forced to wait while the two robbers stole their valuables. Wow. Man, he can't move any faster than he can fucking move, you but dickhead. But if you listen closely, you can hear the elderly woman tell the robbers that her husband had hip surgery as they were ordering him to hurry up and get up. And then the old man himself says it as he struggles to get up and make his way to the closet door. Damn, bro, that's fucked up. Wow, they are assholes, bro. Once the couple's in the closet, the robbers soon leave as one carries out a safe while the other grabs a wallet and the couple's phones. Wow, bro, that shit is sad as fuck. That's fucked up. Fucking scumbags. I feel like when you, people who are robbers are fucking assholes. There were apparently tens of thousands of dollars in that safe belonging to someone who was staying with the couple. Police identified the two suspects as Mitchell Boney Jr., who was 25, and Tyree DeMont Boney Jr., who was 22. Huh, Mitchell good. actually turned himself in and was charged with armed burglary, 
use of a firearm. Yeah, he, yeah, the fucking... and conspiracy to commit a burglary. Tyree is... Look, the reality why he turned himself in, because he had a guilty ass conscience, you fucking dickhead. At least he did that shit, though. I'll give you... I'll give you a A plus for for having a guilty conscience, dickhead. Bill allegedly on the run. Perhaps the scariest part of this is that they clearly knew where the safe was. Tyree wasted no time going straight for where the safe was. This means anyone who was in the house, such as a home repairman, home health care worker, or anyone, could have seen the safe and relayed this information to other people, which is why you should always be careful of who's in your house and what right. they see. Wow. That's fucked up, bro. That shit's terrible. People are awful. Some people are fucking assholes. Anyways, man, shout out to you guys for coming and hanging out with your boy. Yet another one on another day. You dig what I'm saying? For another one. And uh, <laughs> shout out to uh, Taylor once again for copping the first high clothing hoodie. She caught the, uh, or she grabbed the, uh, the Intelligent Mind hoodie. If you guys want to go cop you some merch, check out the link in my Instagram bio and my uh, Facebook bio. Um, there's also a video that I posted on YouTube, um, I think a couple of days ago. You'll see it if you go into the videos. Um, it actually says like new merch or new clothing or whatever, and there's a bunch of new designs and shit. Um, and there's the link in the description of that video for the merch as well. So go cop you some merch. You know what I'm saying? We got new t-shirts, new hoodies. You dig what I'm saying? New shit to come. We got some shit. So stay, stay ready, you dig? And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow. You have a fantastic rest of the motherfucking day and, uh, or night. And yeah, I'll see y'all later. Peace. Peace. Okay? Peace.